one trip or another we met Elvis was it was um, one of the highlights of our visit it was funny because by the time we got near his house we forgot where we were going we were in this Cadillac limousine and you know that but it's like in LA everything goes round and round and round and round and then we I think we're going along Mulholland We had a couple of cups of tea in the back of the car and by the time we got to Elvis's house we forgot where we were going. It didn't really matter where we were going. Bel Air actually and uh, you know, this meet was arranged. We were going to go and see him. I was pretty excited about it all and we arrived. We pulled up and there was these big gates and somebody said, oh yeah we're going to see Elvis and then we all fell out just like in a Beatle cartoon, we all fell out the car, all <laughs> in hysterics, trying to pretend we weren't silly. And then we went in the house, and there's Elvis sitting on a couch playing a Fender bass, plugged in an amplifier, watching the TV. And was, oh, it's Elvis. I mean, it was Elvis. He just just looked like Elvis. He was the king, wasn't he? It was Elvis. This is Mr. Hips, you know, hip swiveling man. Wow, you know, that's Elvis. And he was playing um, Moher Sam all evening. He had it on jukebox. He just played it like endlessly. That was like the record of the moment for him. So it was great to see, oh, he's a music fan. You know, he's not just, because that was one of our big records at the moment too. He had his a TV going all the time, which is what I do anyway. And in front of the TV, he had a massive big, bass amplifier, Fender bass amplifier, or just a Fender amplifier. And a, oh yeah, it was a bass with a bass plugged in it. And he's playing bass all the time with the uh, the picture up on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got in there and uh, played with him, you know. We all plugged in what was ever around, and we all played and sang. I never jammed with Elvis at all. No. Uh, he, John said he did on the John interview. jammed with Elvis. Yeah, it must have been he when used to we go went out of the room. Secretly at night. I think it was because he had a bass there, you know, so I thought... a basement. Right, well, you know, bass, hey, this, he's interested in bass. I think I was playing football with him there. Yeah, I play <laughs> football with Elvis. And round about 10 or 10.30, um, Priscilla was brought in. So I think she had a long thing on and a tiara. I've got this picture of her, like, as a sort of Barbie doll with, like, gingham, kind of purple gingham and a bow, a gingham bow in her very beehive hair. I don't remember. I spent most of the party trying to suss out from his gang if anybody had any reefer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, it wouldn't have mattered to me right. if she was there uh, just, you know, because it was him I came to see and, and I don't remember the boys he had with him. You know, all these gang, the Memphis Mafia, whatever they call them, all those guys. Well, you know, he just was surrounded by these sycophants. Uh, I'm going to go to the loo now. Okay, I'll, we'll all go to the loo with you. You know, it was just so strange, and I was just so angry because he wasn't making any music. He was not doing what he should have been doing. <laughs> we were asking him about this, just making movies and, you know, not doing any personal appearances or TV, and he seems to enjoy it. I think he enjoys making movies so much because we couldn't stand not doing personal appearances, you know. We get bored, we get bored quickly. He says he misses it a bit, you know. He's just normal, he was great, you know, it's just how I expected him. And it just sort of faded out, you know, it's, you couldn't get close. You know, it's not like we could have become good friends, it was impossible. We weren't buddies or anything, you know. But it was really nice, it was really, and he was a nice guy, he was very, he was very slim and, you know, it was great, it was really good, I'm glad I met him. It was, it was great, it was great, I, you know, it was one of the great meetings in my life. I mean, the saddest part is now, years and years later, we found out that he tried to have us banished from America, because he was very big with the CIA and everything, and it's, uh, that's very sad to me, that he, f he felt so threatened. You know, but he thought, like a lot of people, that we were bad for the American youth. <laughs> well, you ain't never caught a rabbit. You ain't no friend of mine. You ain't 